Hi there, I am so glad you're here. This is Jennifer. Today I am creating a bunch of creative holiday tags. Now, if you don't make tags for the holidays, you could definitely incorporate all of these ideas into cards. And you could even use a lot of these techniques for year round cards. Now I have a good variety here. We're gonna do some shaped pieces, some shakers and more. Let's start with these shaped tags that have a fun fold out feature. The best part about these is you don't need anything special to do them. You can use products that you have. I will be doing foiling on them, but you could do anything, background stamps, heat embossing, stenciling, whatever. Let's start by creating a template to form these tree-shaped tags. Creating a template is easy for a triangle. I have a piece of cardstock. Mine happens to be three by four and a quarter inches, up to you what size. I'm putting a mark at the halfway point up there at the top, so that's at one and a half inches. And I'm drawing a pencil line connecting the corner to that point at the top, and I'll do the same thing with the other corner. So there you can see I have a triangle formed. I will now use my trimmer to cut along those pencil lines. So again, you can make this whatever size you want. You could do a bigger one so that you end up with a tree-shaped card. I'm going for a smaller size to make tags. Totally up to you. Just find that halfway point at the top and then make the connection to the, to the bottom corners and cut along that. Now I'm gonna keep this template and use it many times today and in the future. I thought I'd do foiling on these tags just so they would sparkle. I'm using the Hero Arts Holly Hot Foil Plate and the Hero Arts Snowflake Hot Foil Plate. If you do not have a foil machine, you definitely could do uh, maybe gold embossing, heat embossing with a background stamp. I'm using my Spellbinders Glimmer Machine. Any foil machine will work. I have a piece of smooth white cardstock and my Holly Hot Foil Plate. I'm using a piece of tape to create a hinge at the top of the cardstock and plate. Then I can lift up the plate and slide in my hot foil. You want the pretty side of the foil to kiss the pretty side of the hot foil plate. I'll then flip the foil plate down and now we can flip this all over and put it onto our Glimmer Machine. This is a machine that provides the heat. We will then, when the timer is done flashing, put it through our die cut machine to apply the pressure. If you have a different die cut machine, you can check out what hot foil machine works with the die cut machine you have. I have the Spellbinders Platinum 6 and the Glimmer machine works really well with it. Okay, so now after the timer is done flashing, I take all of those plates out and run it through my die cut machine. This just again applies the pressure that um, will give this a beautiful foiled result. All right, so now I'll take all this off and notice that the leftover foil is beautiful. I'm going to use that also. So you can see our pretty results there on the right, but let's use the leftover foil. I have my Pink Fresh Studio Solid Hot Foil Plate. This allows you to use your negative space leftover foil to get another image. So I put that pretty side down onto the plate, a piece of cardstock on top, and I repeat the process. Once that timer is done, I'll run this through our die cut machine. And now we will end up with two foiled images. One will be the reverse of the other. This is a great way to get more from your foiling and it allows me to create more tags during this process. If you want to learn more about this type of foiling technique, I'll link to a video up here on the top right. Next, I'm applying green inks over our foiling. Yep, you can ink blend over your foiling. I like to usually use dye inks for this. You could also use distress inks. I'm applying a pine ink and a fresh lawn ink until I have like a good variation of color there. I then buff the ink off of the foiled area with a dry cloth, and there you can see the foiling resists that ink. You get a gorgeous result. And I will do the same thing with our leftover foiled piece. This is the reverse one where we used the extra foil on it, and I'm applying the same inks over this too. So now I have two backgrounds for one, and we'll actually be able to make four tags from these. First, let's make some more using that snowflake hot foil plate. I did the same process that I did for the holly. I'm gonna skip through that to save some time, but I used the hot foil plate and then I used the reverse piece here along with the solid hot foil plate, just like I did before. And check out that sparkly look. I used the speckled prism foil for this, so it gives a lot of shine. 
And once again, I applied ink over it. This time I used the Indigo and Paradise ink colors from Hero Arts. Any dye ink will work. Okay, so now we have lots of foiled backgrounds. I made a bunch of them, mostly with the holly because I loved it so much, and I felt it worked great for a tree shape, but I wanted to show you another variation, so we also have the snowflakes. All right, now we've got lots of backgrounds. Let's trim them down to tree shapes. We will take that template that we made at the beginning and hold it kind of down on one corner. If I do it this way, I'm able to create two tags from one background. But again, you can make your tree much larger if you want. And I am just laying the template down and then cutting along the edge of the template using my trimmer. You could also just hold the template on the front of your background and use long scissors to trim along the edge. It's pretty easy to follow the edge of this straight line template. And I will do this with all of our backgrounds. So I will end up with a bunch of these tree shapes. Now, if you do not need holiday tags, you could do the same technique and use different colors and do birthday hats. So you could make these birthday hat tags if you prefer. If you think you might be making a lot of these, there are triangle dies out there on the market. I believe Waffle Flower has some. I'll link to them below if I can find them that would really save a lot of time. However, I wanted to come up with something that you could do without having to have a special die. And this works really well. So here are all of our trees. If you want to make them look more tree-like, you could put a little brown tree stump on the bottom. Just cut a little rectangle from scrap dark brown cardstock and just glue it so it peeks out the bottom of the tree. But I thought I would skip that today. I think when, this is, when these tags are tied to presents under a Christmas tree, it'll be pretty obvious it's a tree. All right, now to turn these into fun shaped tags, I'm gonna show you a few different ways to do this. I'm starting with my favorite first. Grab an inexpensive piece of cardstock. Really, you don't need to use your best cardstock for this. Anything is fine. You're going to score it right down the middle at four and a quarter inches. And then you will fold that in half and reinforce that fold line with your bone folder. Okay, so now take one of your trees and put adhesive on the back of it. You could use whatever adhesive you want. And then you will place this up against the folded edge of that white cardstock piece. So notice that this right side edge of the tree is glued, getting glued right against the folded edge of that cardstock piece. I know that seems weird, but stick with me. It'll turn out just fine. Then you can use your long scissors to cut right along the edge. You could use a trimmer like I did before, but I find this is easy enough to do. Okay, so now we have this tree that opens up backwards. I know that seems weird, but give me a moment and you'll see why I did that. So there you can see it opening backwards. On the back of this tag, we will put more adhesive. So I'll put a little bit more on here. And this time we're going to glue the open end of this tag. So notice this open end is over here on the left. See it right there, open end. We're gonna put that open end against the folded edge of our white cardstock piece. So the open end goes against the folded edge of the white cardstock piece. So I'll line up that edge there on the left with the folded edge of that cardstock, and then I will trim off the excess again. So this fold will go in the opposite direction. So watch this, when you open up your tag, it kind of opens like a fan, which I think is really fun, unusual, and a great way to have a spot to write the to and from message on the inside. You could make this bigger, as I mentioned before, and it could be a card that opens this way. See, it stands up nicely on display, so it definitely would be good for a card. But today I wanted to make some tags. Got to get all these tags ready so that when I do my last minute Christmas shopping, the tags are ready to go. All right, so all that leftover cardstock, save that. You can use that for other projects. Now that I've shown you my favorite way to make a tree tag, let me show you a simpler way, just another option. I have another triangle here and I have another piece of folded cardstock. I'm putting adhesive on the back of my tree and I will put the left edge of the tree up against the folded line of the cardstock. So I'll place that in place and then cut around the tree once again. This will give you a tree that just opens kind of like a normal card. So it's a little simpler. It only takes this one folded piece and you're good to go. So it's just another option that takes a little less time. And again, you can make this bigger and have a large folded tree card. 
So let's compare the two that we created. This one in my hand is the first one we did that has that fun fan fold. And then this one is the simpler one on the left. So there's two different options. Both work great for a creative holiday tag. All right, now for the top of the tree, I needed some stars. So I'm using the Hero Arts Holiday Sparkle die set that goes with this Holiday Sparkle stamp set. So I'm not using the stamps. You could if you wanted to. I'm just using the coordinating dies. The coordinating dies to the set work great on their own also. So I die cut those different shaped stars from gold and iridescent silver cardstocks, and I am gluing those to the top of my tags. You could use absolutely any sentiment you want on the front of this or skip one if you wanted. I chose to use the word joyful. Now that is from a word die set from Hero Arts. They have three of them available. On the left is the Christmas words. In the middle is the season words. And on the right is the holiday words. But basically these are different sets of words that work for holiday cards. You have the word and the shadow die included. For these tags, I use Joyful, which is from the season set that you showed in the middle there. I'll use one of the other sets later in this video. Off screen, I die cut Joyful a bunch of times and glued one to the front of each of my tree tags. I'll show you how I decorated the trees later. But first I'll show how I added a string to this little trifold tag. I thought it was easiest to just poke a hole along that score line there. So right there along that fold line on the inside, I'll just poke a hole with my piercing tool. You could definitely use a hole punch if you prefer. And then I will just feed through some inexpensive string. I tend to use plain string on the top of my tags, usually like a twine, a simple white, gold, or silver string, because I'm gonna add this onto a gift that may, maybe has like a big bow on it or onto a gift bag. So keeping this string simple, I feel is best. I could always replace it later if I wanted to. So I loop it through and then just tie a little knot at the end. And there we have the string added to our tag. So let's look at all of our completed tags. You can see all the different versions. I did stamp to and from on the inside of the tags. I'll show you what that to and from is later in this video. And I also added either pearls or gemstones to the berries of the tree. In most cases, they're pretty pink posh red pearls. I didn't want to add too much shine to it because we already have a lot of shine thanks to that beautiful foil plate. Man, I think that's gorgeous. By the way, I use that foil plate on these tags, but it really fits nicely in the center of a card background. On some of these, I use a speckled foil. It's kind of an extra sparkly foil. I have it linked below. It comes in the gold and the silver. This is the gold here. Really adds a lot to these holiday tags. But you could definitely have a fun background by using a gold glitter embossing powder with a background stamp. Now, I do have another type of tree I made here. In this case, I cut two triangles and I just glued the top together with a little fold line. That is another option for creating tags. Okay, here are the snowflake trees. Now these look less tree-like because they're blue. Maybe it looks a little more party hat-like. However, I feel like when you put it on a holiday present, it'll be pretty clear it's a tree. You could always add a little trunk to the bottom if you wanted to. Now on these, you can see that beautiful shine. I used one of those speckled uh, foils. They're not actually speckled. They just have that fun iridescent-y extra glittery look to it. I did add some iridescent sequins uh, in the background just to add some more sparkle. So there you have our blue trees also. Before we move on to the next type of tag, I wanted to mention that this is a great stamp set if you're making a bunch of tags. It's the sentiment strips stamp set and there's a coordinating die. What you do is you stamp the tree. After you've stamped it, you line up the die and it cuts out all of those sentiments. So you could easily create a bunch of sentiments that you can add to the front of your tags, which would be a big time saver. So that's just another option if you're looking for a way to speed up the tag process. Okay, my next tags are completely different. These are tags that I think would make a great keepsake that someone could keep as an ornament. On this one, we formed a wreath with a see-through shaker. Now for this and the next few uh, tags, I'm using the new Hero Arts November 2022 My Monthly Hero Kit. In this kit, there's that large collection of dies, which I'll show you in a moment. There's this stamp set, which has the two from that I used earlier. And then there are embellishments, acetate, and more. 
Now, I use the Hero Arts kits a lot in videos simply because the value is twice the cost. So it's a really great way to get a lot of bang for your buck. And this die set could be used throughout the year. There are a lot of holiday dies here, but you could make spring wreaths with this. You can make lots of different types of tags and it can create a lot of different styles too. I'll show you a few today. So there is that large circle tag die, and then all of those dies along the top are curved so that you can build a wreath on that tag die cut. There are lots of like holly, mistletoe, sprigs and such, little poinsettias, leaves, everything, pine cones in two different sizes to make the wreath. There are also snowflakes and stars. So if you want to create kind of a snowflake circle or star circle, you can. Then there are images to create a little scene inside of the circle with a little reindeer, a little snowman, tree, and more. And then, of course, the stamp set to go with it. I have three different tag ideas for you using these. Let's start with that shaker one first. Now I did dig through my stash and find two additional circle dies. Now you could use the circle die that comes with the die set. You can see it has that little hole at the top, but I wanted to save time and cut the inside and outside circle at the same time. So I just found a circle die of the same size as the tag and then one slightly smaller. So that big circle there is the same size as the tag that comes with the die set and then I have another circle that's slightly smaller. I'm taping these together and these dies will create circle frames that will form the walls of our shaker card. I like to tape the dies together so I can do a bunch of die cutting at once and they will stay in that same position. So the first circle I'm creating is from green cardstock. So I have a circle frame. That circle over there on the left we can save for another project. I'll keep those dies taped together. We'll use them again later. I have a sticky mat here where I'm placing my frame just to hold it still as I add the die cuts. There's no need to do that. I just find it helpful. I'm using liquid adhesive to add these little sprig die cuts. And I like how fast I am able to form a wreath using these. Such a huge time saver. However, you know me, I like to go over the top, so I'm gonna make my wreath more full, but you could definitely keep it as is. There's plenty of room to stamp a greeting on the inside of that wreath, add a shaker window, whatever you want. But I'm layering up these die cuts, cutting little pieces, and just filling it in to make it more full. Totally up to you. I wanted this to be a really special tag that someone would keep and maybe hang on their tree. Okay, now we need to create the walls of our shaker, which will go behind that wreath. I use those same circle dies taped together and cut them six times from white cardstock. You could do more layers if you want a thicker uh, tag. You could do less layers if you want it thinner or if you want to do this on a card. I thought six was a good amount so that I could have lots of room for the shaker bits on the inside to shake around nicely. So I'm gluing these together, making sure I have a good seal, using a strong liquid adhesive, and putting something heavy on it while it dries. So notice how I'm making this nice and thick all the way around. For this, you can see it's much better to build up your shaker walls with stacked die cuts as opposed to trying to do foam adhesive around the outside edge. This will give a nice finished look on the edge of our tag. Okay, so now we have all of these glued together. We need a piece of acetate to put on top of that. Now cutting acetate can sometimes be tricky. Here is the best way to make sure that your die cuts through the acetate. First put down a piece of scrap cardstock, then your acetate, and then your die face down onto it and run it through the machine. That added piece of, of scrap cardstock gives a little more pressure and it cuts much better that way. So now I have a cut acetate circle and another one that we'll use later. I'm using double-sided tape on the back of our wreath and I'm just taking the tape and bending it as I go to go all the way around the circle. This is much faster than cutting little pieces and I can be sure that my adhesive is continuous all the way around so we don't have any of our shaker bits falling out. You could use liquid adhesive here, but it takes a while for that adhesive to dry on the acetate, so this is much faster to use. Once I've completed the circle, I can remove the release paper. It usually comes off in one piece. Then we can lay one of our acetate circles onto that exposed adhesive, making sure to press down so you have a good connection. 
Okay, we need to do another layer of that double-sided tape on this side of the acetate so that we can add our walls to the back of the wreath. So once again, I'm going all the way around with my double-sided tape. This is from Lawn Fawn. It is the narrow double-sided tape. You can see it works really well here. All right, so peel off the release paper. Then I have my stacked white frame die cuts that I'll place right onto that. Again, pressing firmly to make sure we have a good connection. By the way, I used white for these layered die cuts, but you could have used green if you want it to kind of blend in more. Totally up to you. It's now time for the fun part, and that is decorating our wreath. I used lots of elements from the die set in the kit, except for this bow. This bow is from a different set. I just really love this bow. It's from the Hero Arts Holly Berries Stamp and Die set. I will link to it below. Uh, I've used it before in videos. I did that with red, and I did a double offset bow so that it looks a little more full. Then I die cut a bunch of holly leaves from the kit and I'm tucking those into my wreath along with a few glitter snowflakes that I cut from that same die set. So really you can fill this with whatever you want. There are lots of options in the kit. I then added some berries using Pretty Pink Posh Red Pearls. You could use the dies included in the set for the berries, but I thought this bit of shine and dimension was fun. Now it's time to add the shaker bits on the inside of our shaker window. So I'll flip this over and I will start by putting double sided tape around the outside edge of the wreath. Now this is, you could do this after putting the shaker bits on the inside, but I find it easier to do this first because when you try to put that adhesive down and remove the release paper, sometimes your bits go flying but you'll notice mine did anyways. I was kind of messy here. So I'm filling this with different goodies. You can put whatever you want in. I really like the honeybee diamonds. And then I put in some really sparkly gold stars from Trinity Stamps. Now I do have an acetate circle ready to go over, the where, over there and I'll press that on top of the adhesive. By the way, those acetate circles were cut with the larger of the two circle dies that I used to create my circle frames. All right, so I'll press that down and then one last round of double-sided tape around the edge here. And then I have one last circle frame, the white circle frame to put on top of that for a nice finished look. Kind of wish I had done all of those frames in green, but you live and learn. And now I will know for next time. So there we have a see-through shaker window. Now you could put this on the front of a card if you wanted to, but I think it'll be fun as a tag on a gift and you can uh, keep it as an ornament. Now I forgot to add a gold string or thread to the top of this, so I'm just lifting up my frame a little bit from that back acetate piece using a piercer and just tucking a gold cording through there. And then again, we will loop it and tie it in a knot. There are other ways you could have added a string to this, but I felt like this gave the best result. So here is our completed special tag. I love all the sparkle on this. Now you could save time on this by using less die cuts, but I really enjoy that process of making that wreath nice and full and full of color. You can see those shaker bits moving away around freely on the inside. This would sparkle nicely on a Christmas tree with lights too. If you wanted to add a to from message on this, you could have an additional little tag hanging off that can be removed or you can write it along that little frame on the back, that white frame. Okay, time to use that same kit, but this time for a solid tag. And I just wanted to show you how you could create a little scene on the inside. Off screen, I have already created a wreath, much like I did before, but I used a different one of the leaf dies to fill in the wreath. But you can see there's a ring on the back of it, and this will go around our tag. I also used that circle tag uh, that is included in the kit to cut from Hero Art's Lapis Blue cardstock, one of my favorite, favorite colors of cardstock. And I have cut some little snow slopes here. I'm gluing one down upside down and then one right side up on top of it so that our snow slopes kind of go in different directions. My slip doesn't meet the edge of the tag over on the right, but that's okay because the wreath will cover that up. I did my wreath first so that I could arrange my little scene on the inside and make sure it's completely seen when the wreath is on, laying on top of it. I haven't glued the wreath down just yet, but I will in a moment. 
So I'm adding little white die cuts using the church and tree dies included in that kit. You could do different colors. You could do stamping in there, anything you want. Now I die cut the word Noel twice from blue cardstock, and that is from the Hero Arts word set I showed you earlier. I noticed that because of my cutting plates, my die cuts look a little hairy on the edge. If you ever have a hairy die cut, what I like to do is lay it down upside down on a sticky mat and lightly use a paper sander on the back side. You want to make sure you're just doing it lightly so that you don't sand your sticky mat, but this is a great way to remove that little bit of hair on your die cuts and give you a smooth result. We can now start gluing everything together. I'm putting the tag on the back of our wreath. I did die cut the shadow for Noel from vellum and glued the word Noel onto that, and I'll glue that at the base of our wreath. I'm feeding some silver cording through the hole at the top of our tag. It's kind of tucked behind the wreath, but I can get it through there, and then I'll tie that in a double knot at the top. Now, you could really go to town filling in that wreath with other die cuts, but this time I'm keeping it simpler. I did add some gemstones and iridescent silver stars. On the back of the tag, I stamped two from, from the stamp set in the kit, and here you can see all the sparkle I added. So I have some blue gemstones, light blue and dark blue, and then some silver iridescent stars from Trinity Stamps. I put some in the sky also. So this shows you that you can use a wreath around your tag, again making something special that could be used as a keepsake along as a holiday gift tag. I have one more wreath tag to share and then we'll move on to different style tags. Now this one, I'm not going to show the whole process because it's really just gluing die cuts together, but I wanted to show you another style. This is an open wreath. So I used the twig circle die, the wreath die, from Craft Cardstock. And now I'm just assembling some little die cut sprigs and a bow, all from the kit, onto kind of the bottom right of that wreath. So you could save time by not covering the entire wreath and get a different look. I just like to put a strong liquid adhesive on these die cuts and then press them in place and give them time to dry. And before you'll know it, you have a fun looking wreath. I love that open look. I then took some inexpensive gold cording and looped it at the top of the wreath. So now it is a tag or an ornament or both. Now I use the Hero Arts Cozy Penguin stamp set. This has a small to and from sentiment in it. I stamp that onto a small piece of craft cardstock and I'm gluing it on the back where it can be hidden. So there I have a spot for the to from message. So we have this fun tag or ornament, but keep in mind this could easily fit nicely on the front of an A2 card. So there's a size comparison for you. Now I did add some pink Fresh Studio glitter drops. I love these. They are gemstones with glitter on the inside. I chose the red color and used those for the berries. Here's a closer look. I did add some little pine cone die cuts. I doubled up my bow die cut from the kit. And so my bow looked a little more full. I just really had fun adding different elements into it. This is a great die set to create lots of different styles. And I really think it's important when you invest in a kit or die set to have lots of ways to use it. By the way, there is stuff in that kit to do like a star wreath. I didn't finish that one off, but I wanted to mention it. Okay, let's move to something completely different. And I think these are fun, playful, quick tags to make. I have two different options for you. Okay, so I'm using the Hero Arts Light and Mug Tag Die Set. That's the one in the middle of the screen there. I use the bulb alone for this video, but you could use the mugs too. There is also a tree and stocking tag die set over on the right there you could use for this style of tag too. So I die cut a bunch of bulbs from bright colors of cardstock and then also from a lightly, uh, slightly lighter shade of the same color. And I cut this little, little, um, uh, I don't know what you would call that reflection from the lighter color and I'm gluing that on the brighter one. I just followed the cut line that the die made for that little reflection so it was easy to do. I cut the topper from scraps of silver matte cardstock and I used a dark gray pen to color that little loop on the top. So here we have a fun colorful bulb and I did this from lots of different colors of cardstock. 
I then use the Hero Arts Winter Wishes stamp set. This has a great coordinating die set, but I'm just using the greetings. I took the greeting, a gift for you, and cut it in half so I could stack those words to fit on this bulb. You do not have to cut your stamp. You could mask, you know, the different parts to stamp in two parts, but this is a much faster way to use it. On the green and blue bulbs that you see at the top, I stamped two other greetings from this stamp set. These three will all be connected together, so I wanted a similar feel between all of them, but you could mix up sets if you want to. Then I have a purple bulb here. This one's gonna be by itself. I stamped to and from on this using that cozy penguin stamp set that I used earlier. Any to and from message would work. Now for the three bulbs on the left, I tied them together using Baker's twine. I thought this would be fun to kind of have hanging on a present or the top of a gift bag. On the back of one of the bulbs, you can write your to from message. The purple uh, bulb over on the right is by itself. I have the to from stamped on the front and that you could hang on a present. Now to make these super sparkly, I sprayed them with silver glitter dust from ThermoWeb. I am currently using this on everything. I take it outside, give it a quick spray, and look at that shimmer it adds to your cardstock. So this is a great way to really step up plain cardstock and make it really good for the holidays. So here is the first one. All three are tied to together. I think it'd be neat on maybe a craft package, you know, wrapped in craft paper to have this kind of hanging along the front or along again, the edge of a gift bag. There's a closer look at that sparkle and then that silver on the top of it. Didn't take too long to pull those together. Now this is a good reminder to look at what large dies you have. Maybe you have a large star die or a circle that you can make look like an ornament and to create shaped tags from that. They don't have to be fancy if you don't want to, you can keep them simple, lots of options. Another idea would be to stamp a greeting on the front of that single bulb, such as the peace, love, and joy at the bottom right of this holiday foliage message set. I plan to do more of those off screen and do the two from on the back. By the way, this set would also be good stamped in the center of those wreath tags we made earlier if you want to have a main sentiment on those. So there are lots of options for creating gift tags from simple to more elaborate keepsake type tags. I hope you'll give some of these a try. If you wanted to check out what I use today, I always link it below in my YouTube description, but go to my blog because I have a lot more information there. And here at the end, I've linked to two other tag videos that may be helpful. Have a good day and I'll see you again soon.